Beth Castle, and I'm here with Marcella Gilbert, and we're waiting for uh, Madonna Thunderhawk to join us from her end. Um, and we'd like to take a few minutes. We have about a half an hour to talk to you before screening our film, Warrior Women. Uh, I'd like to give a little context, if we could. Um, Warrior Women is a film that is uh, co-directed by myself and Christina King. Um, the Warrior Women Project is something that has been ongoing, um, and it's an indigenous-led collective between Marcella, um, Madonna Thunderhawk, who is getting herself uh, sorted out right now, and we'll see her in a minute. Um, and we've been working together for around 20 years. Um, we work at an intersection of issues, grassroots activism, uh, media, community-based media, uh, archival work, uh, especially oral history work, and that's mm -hmm. where a lot of this started, is um, gathering the interviews. <gasps> Hi, Madonna. Waving. Hi. Uh oh. Can you hear me? Sorry. Being, let's see. Let's just check that. There you go. Oh, what just happened? Oh. Um, yeah, there's another me online. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so we do a whole lot of things connected together. And one of the elements that you're going to see in the film tonight, uh, that's really important. And it's, um, a lot of what, uh, Marcella's life work is about, um, connects to health, wellness, food sovereignty, revitalization of traditional foods and wild foods, um, and a whole lot of other things that she is going to be able to talk to you about. Um, so, um, yeah, that is the framework of what we're going to uh, encounter tonight. And I wanted to begin with uh, handing things over and giving you some context because we've got Madonna, who is uh, Marcella's mother, uh, and they are the two main characters, if you will, in the Warrior Women film. Um, and Madonna is one of our original, well, she's an original gangster granny, um, and she has done a lifetime of work that um, sort of laid the foundation for even just the concept, the, the application and concept of sovereignty, let alone what food sovereignty means. And uh, so I was wondering if Madonna, can you hear me? I can hear you really good. Can you hear me? <laughs> so, so we can try, I, I'm gonna interpret that exactly what she said. Uh, uh, <laughs> which is, she's very happy to be here, and she welcomes you all. Uh, any moment now, we might, uh, we'll get the audio online. We just have to uncheck the uh, part that says, now, now the video has disappeared. So, um, what we're going to do is, while yeah. this is being figured out and she's performing, um, Marcy, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about, um, how you engage with food sovereignty, what it means to you, okay. how you want to redefine it. So you'll see a little bit of it in the film. The film will show some of the work that I've done on my reservation. I live on the um, Shine River Sioux Tribe Reservation in the middle of South Dakota, practically in the middle of South Dakota. It's the same size as the state of Connecticut. And so in the film, You'll see me doing some work related to gardening and um, harvesting wild foods. And so, and that's just a snapshot of some of the work that a lot of different, you know, people in Indian country are, are looking at food sovereignty. And so that's just one of the ways, because where I live, um, the, uh, the food is based on, um, well, food, first of all, it's a food desert, but it's based on ranching. And so not a lot of people are gardeners. Many have that interest, but the land is not conducive to that. So I um, tend to focus on wild, wild foods because there are abundance of wild foods. We just have to relearn them, reuse them, that kind of thing. So as you'll see in the film, some of the work that I've done in the past and some of, and then that continues into now. And um, I'm doing some work now on gardening and things like that. 
But also I want to share that this film is not unique. It, I mean, the story is not unique. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, it, it tells the story of my mother and her journey and I get to be a part of it, but it's not a unique story. There were many families involved in the American Indian movement and many mother, daughter, father, son, you know, stories during that time. So I just want to make sure that um, I say that, that, you know, this isn't, this isn't unique. It's just, we're fortunate that um, Beth took time to re do the research on, on women activism and, and find my mother Madonna and then come and research, come and check it out. So she's been in our lives for since 1998. So she um, she's definitely done her work, you know, and she continues to work on on um, on you know creating those things that she talked about, the oral history project and things like that. So I'm gonna let my mother have a chance. Looks like she's ready. <laughs> Still no audio. Can you hear her? Okay. No. Give me a hint. <laughs> oh no. Food sovereignty? I it mean, was just, yeah, a matter of touching the thing that has the audio on it. Yeah. We can't hear you. The audio's on now. Can you hear me? No, well, we should. We can keep working on it while we. Um, they can't hear me. Okay. Continue our discussion um, with. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think what would be really important for folks to hear, just because we were talking about it on your land the other day, is the, um, are the issues around, for example, ranching's impact uh, on just on the wild foods as well mm -hmm. as the natural mm -hmm. environment. And you just had some really strong and unique perspectives about what does food sovereignty mean in that context? Um, well, you know, and, and you'll see this in the film, um, I've been, I grew up within the American Indian movement. So I would, you know, I, when I, I think of, of uh, food sovereignty, I think of it in terms of as a nation. And so when we look at our people as a nation, what does food sovereignty mean to me? And so I think it's, you know, I think it's more than a um, it's more than planting gardens. It's more than um, creating a you know a way to market our our um, specialty foods. All that's important, but how does that benefit our people as a nation? We can have we can have our foods out there, our specialty foods out there marketed, but our are our our people eating them? Are they using them? Or you know that kind of thing. So, if we're um, talking about food sovereignty, that's that's the level that I think about. Is okay as a nation, we should be feeding our people our own foods, and we should be able to feed our own people She's without outside assistance outside of our nation. And to me, that's. When I think of food sovereignty, that's what I think about. And so, and so there, you know, a lot of work has to be done because remember, we are colonized people. We have a history of colonization, a violent colonization, and stripping our people of of all our life, forms, including our foods and our relationship to the foods. And so we have to relearn all that. And so I think the food sovereignty movement is, um, must include educating the people and bringing our foods back home first before we market them out. Because we're, you know, all peoples of this planet 
wherever we're, wherever our peoples originated from, we're related to the foods in those areas because we've been eating them for thousands and thousands of years. So that's that's my that's what I think about sovereignty is it we have to think of it in those terms as a nation and empowering our people within that nation. So, and so, and it's also a lot of work. <laughs> so Madonna, Madonna Thunderhawk. Yeah. Ta -da! Yes. Now this right. is full disclosure. I did it. My fault. Uh, My fault. Uh, I own this. You are the mistress of technology. Thank you, Chuck. Now stay out of the picture, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> And stop putting your hand over things. Uh, so, uh, you know, as a legendary uh, ass kicker, open, opener of doors, um, you know, total action oriented over the years, uh, back in sort of red power movement days, uh, just wanted you to reflect or think a little bit about what you were doing at the time that made space for even having something called food sovereignty that gets thrown around a lot now. And I just wonder what, what you were thinking, if it was something you thought about back then, is it just part of an overall picture? Any musings you might have? Well, now, you know, that I'm elderly and stuff, I can think back and I can see the progression of what happened. And just on our reservation, in our community, um, that changed our eating habits overnight now I can see that, but at the time, you know, it it was like, it wasn't even an issue because first of all, they were damming up the Missouri River and it was gonna, they were gonna, you know, close the dam and, and the flooding of the land was gonna start. And uh, like Marcy said, our land is not farmland, it's prairie land, semi-arid, you know, grasslands. But we did have uh, wetlands along the, the tributaries and the river, you know, and the natural flow of the river, the, the spring rise and the floods and like that, you know, and that's where the wetlands were. Well, the United States government and the powers that be decided to dam up the Missouri River in specific places, which happened to be, you know, right wherever there was an Indian reservation in North Dakota and South Dakota. So what happened is, uh, the flood came uh, almost overnight. So uh, the wetlands disappeared. There wasn't any kind of transition period of any kind. So our diet went from hunting and gathering to commodity issue. Commodity issues from the, the government, handouts, that type of thing, total disruption of, 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 of our food system. And we see the result today, the second, third generation, you know, it's uh, diabetes and heart trouble, all of that, you know, as a result of, of how the, the food uh, situation changed. So yeah, you know, uh, food sovereignty, that was a, a new thing for me to learn that term to say, you know, because, uh, you mean we can actually do something about it and change it, you know? But it has to be, to me, the way I see it, the way I think about it is, it has to be a new way of, mm. of food sovereignty because our land is no more, no longer pristine like it was when I was young and we were able to eat the wild animals because now with the pesticides and the herbicides that are being put all over the, the land uh, it's getting gotten into the groundwater system. The animals are suffering from bad health, just like the humans. Mm. So, you know, going back to hunting, you know, I don't know if I'd want my great grandchildren to eat, you know, the animals, the wild animals that we did when we were young. And um, growing, growing stuff, you know, is, is another thing that our people were not farmers, you know, they didn't, they were gatherers, you know, and they knew the, the plants and the, the nutrition of the different. Uh, but now, because of how the land's been abused and misused and the water systems contaminated, even those, uh, you know, original 
um, native plants and stuff that our, our ancestors and, and I ate when I was a young girl, those are gone. Most of them are gone. So we have to think of it, I think, in a, in a, a new way of how we can, we can uh, do super, food sovereignty in a way that, that our, our native bodies can, can uh, uh, metabolize, you know, a different kind of food system. I don't know. It's it, like Marcy said, it's going to be a lot of work, but we've got to do it. Mm. And we will. We're survivors. We'll do it. Well, I wanted to connect that up with um, just one quick thing, like tying it to the film that was really powerful because I think, you know, from the very beginning, learning about the, you know, the flooding was such a genocidal act that happened um, mm. and was so, changed things overnight so quickly. And we have that, that segment in the film where we have the commodity bus pulling up and you know, you just see everybody in line, and then there's you can't really see it in the shot, but you know, it's canned meat, everything, all the canned stuff, and you know, if you zoom in even closer, you can see that the, uh, you know, the meat is like expired by a year, um, and so it's it's a powerful thing. We only touch on it in the film, but it's a huge part of, you know, fundamental survival, obviously. And um, Marcy, is there some I mean, to me, it's like, this is, we're literally watching the legacy here. So, uh, you know, anything you want to follow up specifically from Well, I think Madonna. just to refer to the film, you, I think you guys are, I mean, we're, we don't do justice to the film in, the, in this short amount of time. So I think you'll get, a, you'll get a lot of what we're talking about in the film. It's really, really a good film. So I hope you enjoy it. But I do, I do want to say that one of the, one of the um, points that I want to make about food sovereignty is um, as, as indigenous people, we're, we have, we have, well, anybody really, but our people had to fight for the right to, to have access to our own foods. And we still have to do that now. And, be, and, you know, the work that, that the American Indian Movement has done in the past has led to the declaration of the indigenous rights to the UN. But, it, but we, we have to hold that as, as, as something that we, we can use to move forward because everybody has that right. And so I think we have to be very... Um, you know, um, conscious as we move forward, because having, you know, being related to the land puts us in a unique situation, in a unique position. And, but so anyway, we can talk about that forever, but I do want to say that this film highlights women. And one of those women is, is my mother. And I think this is part of history. I'm glad that, that Beth took the time to do, to, you know, put this together along with Christina King because it's part of history that wasn't out there. People were not aware of the work that, that women were doing to support the men who were being highlighted by, by the society. But um, I'm, proud, I'm proud to be a part of that history and, and um, I just, you know, wanted to point that out that it's, it's a really good film and you're gonna love it. <laughs> well, yeah. The, the, um, yeah, I mean, we had a, there's a lot of things going on here for us. Like the Warrior Women Project is something that has been ongoing. The film has been a really powerful, big experience in the process of that and has really brought together some of the most powerful things from all of these, or all this oral history work. And I guess, that's one of the things that we represent that I also think is important is that this is what collaboration, solidarity, and allies, what it all looks like in action and what happens when you stay community-based and you recognize and question like what is community, who is it, and how are you accountable to it? Um, and so, you know, the film has got, you know, it's a Peabody nominated film, um, you know, 
the, my co-director, Christina King, is a native filmmaker um, working on, you know, continuing her career. Um, and, you know, Anna Pittman, our producer, uh, we have, we just have a wonderful group, mostly of women who um, helped get the film out there and done. And what we're happy to be able to do are things like this. And this is what's so wonderful is we made the film collectively so that it could be a tool for a resource for education and changing minds and just showing people, if nothing else, maybe the their own lives can be reflected, you know, in a way that can also be part of the bigger historical narrative that we need to change desperately. So, um, you know, the other aspects, and we only have a few minutes here before you get a chance to watch it. Um, and I'm not sure if we do have any questions, um, but I know that one of the, uh, and we're not making fun of this question. It's just the fact that it, it is the same, we get the same question each time. Um, and you know what what you do what sustains what sustains you in the fight so you know the fight's so big i was just hoping you could you know share a little bit madonna that you know that we're in that we're in that tunnel and there's no light so get over it <laughs> bless you uh oh sorry <laughs> Tell us what you, you know, what are the things that any, any sort of final, final words or ideas about, you know, where the world is now and what, you know, how do you sustain or what's your, what's your best advice for folks who want to be involved? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just like to talk to that uh, imaginary person who's in it for the long haul. And how are they going to know that if they're really young, you know? But you never know who you're talking to, you know, and it might be somebody that's been involved for a few years, you know, but you have to make that, that um, realization, you have to check it out, you know, if you all of a sudden look around and you say, wow, yeah, it's been years and I'm still, still at it, you know, and that's, that, that's right away, you know, then you're in it, you know, for the long haul. And by that time, it's probably a responsibility. You're looking at it in that, that way you know those eyes that it's a responsibility and that's and to me that's a good thing because it's of all walks of life all our allies that we have all over this country all over the world you know that's what they you know they've done you know is they see it as a responsibility to to mother earth for everybody so we're um thank you madonna um yeah we got to save the planet because we live on it. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, but uh, we're going to move into the screening of the film now. And uh, what I encourage you to do is, you know, the things that we do in modern day to stay connected and follow us on social media. Um, you know, consider any type of donation goes directly to the grassroots and community-based work that we're doing. You can find that both um, on warriorwomenfilm.com and warriorwomen.org. Um, all the Facebook uh, handles and such are right there. And we'd love to hear from you uh, and stay in touch, get on our mailing list and uh, enjoy Warrior Women. You're gonna love it. <laughs>